The Minecraft Bedrock Edition Random Seed Glitchless World Record is one of the biggest records in Minecraft speedrunning. And on March 11th, it was beaten for the first time in almost a year. The massive breakthrough by longtime Bedrock runner Craze beat his own personal best by over 90 seconds and took down the previous record by 35, the biggest world record cut in the category since 2021. Between Craze's storied history in Bedrock speedrunning, the huge time cut, and the crazy history that developed in the year leading up to this run, including a massive record being rejected from the leaderboard, this new record by Craze is one of the biggest events we've seen in Minecraft speedrunning in a while. And that only becomes more clear when you watch the run itself. In this video, I'm going to break down the new Minecraft Bedrock world record the wild journey that got Craze to this point, and the strategies he used that allowed this run to stand above the rest. This is the story of a passionate and dedicated runner who put in years of work and finally broke through in one of Minecraft's most chaotic categories. This is the story of Craze's 819. For those of you who haven't seen a Minecraft Bedrock speedrun before, I'll quickly explain the absolute basics. They're very different from the more well-known Java runs, which typically follow a straightforward progression of spawning in the overworld, entering the nether, acquiring blaze rods and ender pearls, traveling to the stronghold, and going to the end and killing the dragon. The Bedrock meta, though, involves spawning in the overworld and finding a village, and using that to find the stronghold. I'll explain how that works later in the video. Then, going to the nether from the stronghold to get pearls and rods, returning to the stronghold, going to the end, and finishing the run. I'll dive into the particular strats involved with this meta as I break down Craze's run. But before I do that, in order to properly appreciate just how meaningful this record is, we need to start at the beginning of Craze's journey. His 819 might have been Craze's first world record in 1.16 Bedrock RSG, but he's anything but a newcomer to the category. His path to the record began in the same place so many other speedrunners started their journey, the quarantine-riddled summer of 2020. Craze first started speedrunning Minecraft on mobile, one of the three devices with separate leaderboards for Bedrock Edition, and he quickly figured out that he was pretty good. After setting a new personal best of 48 minutes in September, he decided he would try to get the mobile world record, which at the time was 38 minutes and 47 seconds. He found himself pulled in two directions, though, when he also started playing set seed runs and learned that he was also really good at those. Good enough that on December 5th, 2020, he broke the world record, with a time of 4 minutes and 42 seconds. After pulling that off, he refocused on Random Seed Glitchless, where he had to grind much harder than he had on SS which had only taken him a month to set a world record in. But two months later, the RSG grind paid off, as he set the mobile RSG record at 26 minutes and 27 seconds, a time cut of almost two minutes from the previous record. For reference, the Bedrock record on PC at the time was 1440, albeit with much, much easier controls. When Craze's mobile record was beaten after just five days, he decided it was time to get a little more serious. He had gotten a new PC earlier that summer, so it was time to make the leap from mobile to desktop. This was the first desktop Craze had ever owned, so it took some work for him to get acclimated to the controls. If you couldn't tell yet though, Craze is a pretty talented speedrunner. So just two months later, he set a new SSG world record for all of Minecraft Bedrock on his PC. This was the beginning of a dominant year, in which Craze broke the SSG world record six times, with his final record of 252 standing for eight months, the longest lived record in the category's history to date. He didn't stop his RSG efforts either. He set a new personal best eight times in 2021, bringing his time down from 2627 to 1158. Along the way, he had multiple close brushes with the world record, including a run in November where the only thing stopping him from entering the end on potential world record pace was a bug that caused his nether portal to take him to a new location in the overworld instead of the portal he originally built in the stronghold. Still, despite some setbacks, Craze's grind for the world record was making consistent progress, with a December 1st PB of 1158 being his last of the year. But in early 2022, his grind was halted, as the war in Ukraine forced him to leave his home for several months. 
When he was able to return, though, he picked up right where he left off, setting three more personal bests in 2022. His final PB was easily the most significant, as on October 8th, he took a huge leap forward by beating the game in 9 minutes and 58 seconds. Not only was this his first sub-10 completion, it was only the second sub-10 on Minecraft Bedrock in the game's history, and it placed Kraze only 3 seconds behind the world record at the time. But beyond the time itself, the run stands out even among the current day leaderboard because of the insane splits in the run. It starts out pretty standard. Craze reaches the portal room in the stronghold at 2.45, about 35 seconds later than Kiwiist Burb did in their 9.55 world record that Craze came so close to beating. But because the village Craze spawned by was a zombie village, there was no iron golem, which is how runners normally get the iron they need for a bucket that they use to build the nether portal. Craze spends an extra minute and a half looking for iron ore and smelting it, a task that's a little extra turbulent in a stronghold, then spends another 30 seconds on top of that towering back to the surface of the world to get water and digging back down. All told, he doesn't get into the nether until 5 minutes and 44 seconds, over 3 minutes later than Kiwius Burb did. This is absolutely not world record pace, but all Craze does next is pull off the second fastest nether split of all time in any recorded sub-13 minute run. His nether portion of the run is so fast that he makes up the entire 3 minute gap and ends up entering the end 4 seconds ahead of Burb's record. A slightly slower end fight meant that he ended up 3 seconds short of a record, but what had just happened was arguably just as exciting. Of the 48 recorded sub-13 minute runs we know of for Bedrock RSG, Craze's 958 has the single slowest nether entry, but in its entirety, the run ranks 13th. After coming so close to claiming the record, Craze decided to move away from Minecraft speedrunning, and his fellow runners were sad to see him go. According to former record holder Danny15, the Bedrock speedrunning community is very tight-knit, and whenever a runner leaves, a part of the community dies. When he left, Craze told Danny, who was fifth on the leaderboard and had never held the record before, that he wanted him to get the record, and when he did so, not once, but twice in early 2023, he dedicated his record to Craze. This came during a stretch in Craze's absence that was maybe the wildest few months in the history of Bedrock Speedrunning. In March and April of 2023, the record was beaten three times, first by Danny15, then LOL869, who was the first to break the nine minute barrier before Danny15 ultimately took the record back. But on May 21st, the category seemed to be permanently upended when LOL869 pulled off a shocking six minute, 45 second run that wasn't just the fastest bedrock run, but the fastest run in all of Minecraft Random Seed Glitchless. But it wasn't to be. After being reviewed by the mods, the run was determined to be unverifiable due to LOL869 using a resource pack and a macro that were not allowed. Although the mods did say that they had no definitive proof the run was intentionally cheated. To this day, top runners are pretty split on whether they think the run was legit, but sadly, we'll probably never know. With that run looming as one of the biggest what-ifs in Minecraft speedrunning history, the category settled down for the rest of the year. And after about a year of absence, Craze realized he just couldn't stay away from the game he loved. In that year, the world record had been lowered by a minute, but Craze's iconic 958 still ranked fifth on the leaderboard. In fact, he credits that run with motivating him to return to the grind and not look back, saying he wouldn't have gotten where he did without it, and that it still is, and always will be, his favorite run he's played. Craze was back to work, but several months passed without him being able to top his 958, let alone Danny's 854. But for a runner with as much dedication and passion for the game as Craze, it seemed to only be a matter of time before he had his moment. And on March 11th, that moment finally came. Almost four years after he started playing the category, not only was Craze about to beat the world record by over half a minute, he was about to finally beat his 958 by three times as much. So, without further ado, let's dive into how it went down. Like I mentioned earlier, Bedrock speedrunners start the run by finding a village and using that to find the stronghold. 
This works because any village within the ring of coordinates where a stronghold can generate has about a 15% chance of one spawning right beneath it. Now, this range of coordinates is pretty far from the center of the world, which is why Java runners do the majority of their traveling in the nether, where one block is equivalent to eight in the overworld. But Bedrock has a very useful feature when spawning players into the world. If the initial spawn point of the player isn't in a forest, jungle, plains, or taiga biome, the game won't allow the player to spawn there. Instead, it will increase the X coordinate of the spawn point four blocks at a time until the coordinates land in a spawnable biome, meaning players can sometimes spawn hundreds or even thousands of blocks east of the center of the world, sometimes far enough that they spawn inside the first stronghold ring. From there, they just need a village, and then they need that village to have a stronghold under it. This combination of circumstances that allows the player to find the stronghold at the beginning of the run is quite rare, making Bedrock RSG a very reset-heavy category, so only the runners with a whole lot of patience and determination have a good shot at potential world records. Luckily, Craze is one of those runners. Craze is resetting with a wall of six instances of Minecraft, which allows him to save real-life time that he would be spending waiting on loading screens. Seeing in the world preview that one of his spawns is at X coordinate 1134, Craze jumps into the world, hoping to see a village nearby. That's exactly what happens, as Craze spots a plains village about 30 seconds away. This isn't a perfect start, since you can technically just spawn inside the village, but it's a pretty similar start to Danny 15s in his world record that Craze is currently trying to beat. Craze reaches the village at 35 seconds, stopping to grab a bed, which he'll need exactly three of for the dragon fight. He heads to a blacksmith next, hoping to find materials that will speed up his tool gathering process, and he's rewarded with an iron pickaxe, which will save a bit of time. He makes stone tools and gathers a bit more wood, then robs two more houses for their beds. He also smartly grabs the emeralds from this house chest, and uses them to trade with a farmer villager for some more bread, saving the time he'd have to spend gathering hay or carrots for food. The last thing he needs to do in the village is kill the iron golem, since he'll need to make a bucket to build his nether portal. He gets this done at 1.45, 20 seconds behind Danny 15's pace, but he's able to immediately pivot from this and go straight to find the stronghold. He can't know where the end portal is going to be, but he knows where the starter staircase, which is the start point for stronghold generation, is located based off of the village fountain. Now, this is a great pace to start the run, but remember, there's only about a 15% chance that there's actually a stronghold here. The vast majority of Bedrock runs end at this stage, leaving the runners to go back to flipping through loading screens. But this time, Craze finds what he's looking for, breaking into the stronghold at 2.18, just four seconds later than Danny15 did in his record. Now it's just a matter of finding the end portal room, which can be another frustrating portion of the run. On Java Edition, runners can use the pie chart on the F3 screen to get a good sense of the direction of the portal room, but on Bedrock Edition, there's no such tool, so runners have to search as methodically as they can and hope the portal room reveals itself to them. The first direction Craze checks is a series of dead ends. Next, he tries going left, and after some hallways lead him down two flights of stairs, which could be a big time loss if they don't lead him to the portal, he sees the light at the end of the tunnel. Literally. All things considered, it could have been worse, as he gets to the portal room just five seconds later than Danny 15, and here he jumps ahead by building his nether portal very quickly, showing off his phenomenal mechanics. He's into the nether at 3.11, now nine seconds ahead of the world record. There are two things Kraze needs to accomplish now. He needs blaze rods and ender pearls, which he'll use to craft eyes of ender, which will fill the end portal and take him to the end. There are 12 frames in an end portal, each needing an eye for the portal to be opened, but each frame has a 10% chance of generating with an eye already in it. Normally runners will go for at least 12 ender pearls and five or six blaze rods, which are each crafted into two blaze powder before they're turned into eyes of ender. An advantage of the stronghold first route that bedrock runners take, though, is seeing how many eyes of ender they'll need before they reach the nether, instead of having to decide whether to play it safe with six blaze rods or take a time-saving risk by leaving on five. Craze's portal came with one eye in it, so he'll need at least 11 ender pearls and six blaze rods. The way runners get ender pearls can vary, but the strat for getting rods is always the same. Find another fortress and kill some blazes. Craze loads into the nether and spawns practically inside of a fortress, so first things first, it's blaze hunting time. He encounters a stray blaze right away and gets his first rod, which has a 50% chance of dropping when a blaze dies. There's also a blaze spawner immediately nearby, but because a ruined portal tried to generate on top of it, it's a bit of a treacherous spot to farm blaze rods. 
Luckily, there's another spawner around the corner. He spends the next 40 seconds killing blazes, going 4 for 8 on rods in total, then leaves to try to get his last two rods from some more strays on the way out. He circles around to get to the two nearest blazes, one of which drops a rod, then spots two more on a bridge near where he entered the fortress. The first one he kills drops the sixth rod he needs, and he immediately abandons ship, leaving the fortress at 5 minutes in search of a source of enderpearls. The fastest way to get enderpearls in any modern version of the game is by trading gold to piglins, but there's a couple ways runners can go about this. The majority of runs involve going to a bastion, where there's an abundance of gold and piglins, and trading for pearls in bulk, but in Craze's Nether, there's no bastion to be found. The alternative is classic strats, where runners gather gold wherever they can find it and find some stray piglins to trade with. Because they get to trade far less gold, the odds are much lower that they'll get the pearls they need. But if things go their way, it can be as fast as the fastest Bastion splits. In fact, Craze used classic strats in his 958, where he pulled off the second fastest nether split in any sub-13 run, and the fastest using classic strats. In this run, he's in the right spot for classic, since nether wastes allow the runner to find pockets of gold, like the ones Craze mines here, and piglins can spawn in them naturally. At first, it seems like finding piglins might be an issue here, but as Craze comes over this hill, he's greeted by a welcome sight three zombie piglins. He's only got eight gold ingots, and each gold ingot on bedrock has a 4.7% chance of making a piglin drop four to eight enderpearls, meaning he needs at least two one in 20 trades to go his way. While his piglins trade, Kraze finds some more gold ore, which he has to quickly craft and trade when the piglins finish trading and remember that they're supposed to kill Kraze for robbing their world of its natural resources. With the piglins distracted again, he goes to the original trading spot to find no enderpearls. Not a good sign as he only has five more gold to barter with. Now, Kraze does have a small time cushion here. Danny didn't leave the nether until 8.06 in his world record, but he also had a nearly perfect end split. And all Kraze can do to get pearls in this situation is look for more scraps of gold and hope for lucky trades. In other words, if these last trades don't come through, it's probably time for Kraze to reset and go back to waiting for the next good seed. But in his time of need, the Minecraft gods step in as two piglins decide to give him pearls, leaving him with 14, more than enough for the rest of the run. He rewards the piglins' generosity by... Oh. oh my god. Kray's books it back towards his nether portal, as suddenly, the finish line and a potential world record are in sight. While this record is generally very well played, one small time loss here is that Kray's decides not to throw one of his remaining enderpearls to cover some of the distance to his portal, which he did intentionally because he didn't want to choke in a stupid way. He gets to his portal maybe 10 seconds slower because of it, but still, he's back into the stronghold at 7.30, and five seconds later, he's in the end. Right now, he's 37 seconds ahead of Danny 15's world record pace. His 734 end entry is the second fastest ever in a completed run, behind only Danny's 718 enter in the first world record he set almost exactly a year before. If Craze can finish the game in the next 80 seconds, then three years of dedication, hundreds of thousands of resets, and countless close calls that left him just short will have finally paid off in the biggest way possible. There's only one thing left standing in his way, the Ender Dragon. In Minecraft Bedrock, runners have a unique approach to killing the Ender Dragon. Before they can do anything, they need the dragon to perch at the fountain in the middle of the end. This has a roughly 50-50 chance of happening right away when the runner enters the end, but it can also take much longer. How long it takes is just up to luck, making the length of the end fight frustratingly out of the runner's control for the most part. Although the dragon does perch more quickly and at shorter intervals on bedrock than Java, where it's an even bigger problem. Once the dragon is perched, the runner builds a tower adjacent to the direction the dragon's head is facing, and places lava at the top of the tower, letting it run down the sides. The player will kill the dragon with beds, but when they do this, the dragon will try to fly away. The lava tower slows the dragon down enough that the player can get three beds off before it's out of reach. This isn't quite enough damage to finish the dragon off, though, so first the player deals melee damage to the dragon, leaving just enough health that the dragon's flight response isn't activated. To help with this, they take advantage of a bug where by hitting the dragon's underbelly with a projectile, this is usually either an arrow or an enderpearl, they're able to deal full critical attack damage with a weapon, something the player normally can't do to the dragon. 
Once the melee is done and the tower is built, all that's left to do is blow up the beds, and the dragon's dead. It's a straightforward route, and in Kraze's run, the only major factor remaining is when the dragon perches, and if Kraze can execute what he needs to. 80 seconds to break the record. It's now or never. Kraze spawns on a floating platform, and uses one of his remaining pearls to teleport onto the end island. He takes a moment to organize his inventory, as right in front of him, the dragon perches. Technically, Kraze could save a couple of seconds here by using a slightly different method called stacking, where he would build the lava tower directly from the ground using Bedrock's weird block placing mechanics, then deal all the damage to the dragon at once, skipping the time spent jumping up and down from the tower. But again, he makes a conscious decision here to take the slight time loss in exchange for consistency. Stacking doesn't work 100% of the time, but the usual route does. Meaning now that the dragon is perched, all Kraze has to do is lock in and finish the run, like he has thousands of times before. He places the obsidian at his first bed, he pearls at the dragon and chops at it with his pickaxe, he runs a few blocks out and stacks up. The 8 minute mark passes, still plenty of time. It's all just execution. He puts his last two beds in his hotbar, places the lava, leaps down, and... Eight minutes, 19 seconds. It's been almost four years, but Kraze has finally claimed the Minecraft Bedrock RSG world record. Now that he's finally accomplished the thing he's been working towards for so long, I'd say he's earned the right to move on to other things. But for a runner that's spent so much of his life on this, it should come as no surprise that that's not what he wants to do. Kraze is genuinely passionate about Bedrock RSG, and just because he's finally climbed the highest peak by making it where no runner has before, that doesn't mean he's gonna stop climbing. And make no mistake, while it's been a long time since the last world record, this category still has a long way to go. LOL 689-645 conceivably being real is all the evidence we need of that. And there is a universe where the Bedrock record becomes faster than Java for only the second time in the history of the game. Regardless of what's coming for Bedrock speedrunning, there's no question that Kraze will be one of the players leading the charge. Congratulations to him on a truly special world record, and a huge thanks to both Kraze and Danny15 for helping make this video possible. Thanks so much to you for making it to the end of the video, and if you enjoyed, please drop a like and a comment to help the video reach more people, or recommend the video to someone you think would enjoy it. You can also let us know what you want to see a video about next down in the comments. And be sure to subscribe and turn on notifications so you don't miss our next upload. As always, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.